today, I'm going to be showing you how to use the PDF REST API with Microsoft Power Automate. I'm going to be taking you through the flow of the triggers when a document appears in the PDF card directory that I've created in my OneDrive. When a document appears and the flow is triggered, we're going to upload it to the PDF REST service, process it, and then send the resulting file back to OneDrive. Specifically, I'm going to be uploading an image file, which will be transformed into a PDF using the API's PDF endpoint. Please note that this OneDrive file upload step is not strictly required for the API, and you are free to use any other trigger or proceeding steps as long as they result in a file to be sent to the API. All right, now, as I said, for the first step, we're going to want to upload a file that we got from OneDrive to the PDF REST API. So I'm going to go in here, and we're going to find the HTTP request action. And you'll see that this is a premium action from Microsoft Power Automate. So if you don't have a license, you may need to acquire one. We're going to make a post request here, and we're going to send our post request to the upload endpoints of the PDF REST API. Under headers, we need to put in our API key. And I have an API key that I acquired by signing up for an account at pdfs.com. You can go to pdfs.com yourself and sign up for an account and get a key. Start sending your calls in minutes. Under queries, we're not going to put anything. And then under body, the most important part here, uh, we're going to paste in this template. And this is pretty standard, just creating a multi-part form data call. Uh, you're welcome to pause the video at this point and copy the template yourself. or you can find this template to copy on pdfs.com under one of our solution posts about Microsoft Power Automate. And really the only important thing in here is the body, which we just want to fill with the dynamic content, file content in this case, from OneDrive. Uh, the other thing that you might feel like changing is the file name, but this doesn't really matter for the upload step because all we really are going to care about is the name of the file that comes out on the other end. This can really be anything. Now, once we have the upload HTTP request working, the next thing we're going to want to do is parse out the return data so that we can use it going forward. So we'll just look for a JSON parser here uh, because the HTTP upload request will be returning JSON formatted data. Uh, for the content, we're just going to slide the body of the previous upload request in. And for the schema, we'll actually go to generate from sample and paste in the schema of the JSON payload that we'll be receiving from upload, which will be a list of files with name and ID lists in them. Uh, it will be the actual names and IDs when you have a real request going through. And you can see that once you paste that in, it automatically generates this. We don't have to type out all of this complicated stuff. Now, once we have the upload step postings so that we can get a handle on that data, we're going to create another HTTP step and this time we're going to be taking the data that we received, especially particularly the ID, and we're going to be using that to post to one of the endpoints and process that file. So once again, as I said, we're doing a post. Our URL is going to be the PDF route this time because we want that PNG that we uploaded to be transformed into a PDF. So we'll again be putting in our API key. It will be the same one that you put in up above. The API keys are good for multiple requests. Okay, queries will be left blank. And in this case, in the body, we're just going to be putting in some JSON because all we're going to send at this point is the ID. And the ID will come from the previous post JSON step, the ID. Now you'll notice that when you do this step, it changes to an apply to each because what the upload step actually returns is an array of files. And Microsoft Power Automate has cleverly noticed that this is the case. Uh, our upload array will only have one item in it because we only uploaded one file. But it is prepared to post multiple things should that be the case. And this doesn't change anything with our flow. It just means that all of our actions are now going to be within this apply to each because it is it thinks it's working with potentially multiple files. So now that we have the PDF processing step done, uh, we will once again want to be posting the results of that. And so in order to do that, we're going to go down here and we're going to add another JSON posting step. Uh, same as before, the exact same step and tool. Uh, we're going to go up here and we're going to pipe the body of the PDF processing HTTP step in. 
and then we'll be generating our schema using the output of the HTTP PDF step. You'll see that there is an output URL, which shows you where you can download the file, uh, an output ID, which shows the ID of the output on the server, and an input ID that shows input ID. Um, and that's it for this step. Uh, once again, just processing the same as before. So now that we have used that parsing step to parse out the IDs and URL from the PDF processing step, uh, our next step is going to be to take that output ID, output URL, and upload them to OneDrive. Uh, you can actually take the input output ID, output URL, and change it into other calls in the API, uh, pushing it forward the same way that you used the upload endpoints output ID. And you can change as many calls as you want that way. There's no particular limits on how far you can go. But we're not going to do that kind of chaining in here. Instead, we're just going to come here and pick our upload to OneDrive from URL. Uh, our source URL is going to be that output URL that we had pulled out of the processing step. But note that the output ID and input ID are in here if we wanted to use them. Uh, destination file path is just going to be a file path that I have selected in my OneDrive. So now that we're finished building the flow, let's go ahead and see it run. Come up here and save it. Make sure that we got everything locked in. And then once we get the green banner, we'll come here, test manually. It means that we have to go to our OneDrive. You'll see we're in the PDF REST directory where we expect the inputs to be. So I'll just go ahead and upload a PDF REST logo. And we'll see it's uploaded. We can come back here and watch the flow and wait for it to recognize the file and finish going. We'll see it ran successfully because it was a pretty small file, easy to run through. And now if we go back to the OneDrive, we go into our output directory. So a quick little refresh here, and we can see we got the processed PDF. We can even open it up and see that it is, in fact, our PDF logo in PDF form. 